Okay, for some reason, apologies there, uh, for some reason, the uh, first part of this uh, screen, uh, of the series of screencasts apparently is only five minutes long. Um, I don't know what was up with Screencast-O-Matic there, but I watched it count down to five minutes and I was kind of worried. So uh, anyway, here's part two. Um, where was I? Creative topics. Okay, resist easy thinking or tired answers. I want you to be inspired uh, by whatever topic you choose to write on. And um, inspiration can take many, many different forms. Um, I mean, I put the joke up here. Uh, I heard you like writing research papers about memes. So here's a meme about writing research papers about memes in your research paper. Um, you want to write about memes? Go right ahead. Uh, we can take any topic and make it academic. So um, you don't have to take it. You don't. You don't have to write on a capital I important uh, topic. You, you want to go right ahead. Um, but there are lots of ways to define. You know, uh, academic. I'm gonna have a coughing fit. Okay. Oh, that was a tough one. Uh, so. How can you be inspired? Well, of course, there's the Stark State Digital Library, which you know how to navigate as a result of passing college composition. Congratulations on that again. Uh, so get in there, type in topics that you're curious about, see what the professionals are writing about, you know, the peer-reviewed uh, journals. Uh, it's also got a, you know, uh, uh, Academic Search uh, Complete has a, a wide range of publications all that, uh, that, that collate in one place. So get on uh, Stark State Digital Library. Um, traditional journalism, and I curate this list very carefully uh, so that um, you don't have to deviate from it. If you just start Googling your topics, uh, there's a, there's an inherent danger in that one I hope I don't have to explain to you, but uh, you can think, you know, uh, massively, uh, you know, global, international topics, sure. You can think uh, hyper-local topics as well, and that's really what this, this list is meant to um, kind of pull out of you. So, uh, you know, the failing... <laughs> New York Times. Uh, I love the Atlantic. I mean, I, I stand by all of these uh, publications. And if you want to get into the whole, you know, uh, you know Gawker, Deadspin, AV Club, you know, uh, uh, io9, you know, uh, Gizmodo type thing, that's fine. Um, uh, but there, I, I fully stand by every uh, publication on this list. Click around, see what's in the news. You know, I like my topics. Piping hot and fresh. Uh, so the more relevant your topic is today as opposed to uh, a time-honored subject that you're finally going to place you know your ideas into uh, that's why I don't like old stale topics that have been written about a million times on a personal note they're fairly boring to read because uh, I've read a lot of them because lots of students think that writing on reproductive rights on the welfare state on uh, you know even uh, uh, broad broad topics like human trafficking I realize it's a very serious and important topic they all are but what new thinking are you really going to add to uh, a topic that's been written about so very extensively? That's why I like brand new topics, cutting edge topics. You have a chance to steer the narrative in your own way and that gives your writing a vitality, like a vital sign, vitality, it gives it life, okay? And um, that's very energizing. If you are wanting to work through your own personal position on, on a topic and that's why you wanna write on something that's sort of been you know traditionally written about a lot of, um, go for it. I'm here for that. That's that's energizing in its, in its own way. But the most direct route to an interesting topic is something that people haven't settled their minds on yet. You know that. Uh, so click around, see what's in the news. Go to any of these. Okay. Um, you know, if you're a data heavy person, I'm just looking at one like 538 is nothing but data. So uh, you know, uh, that's not where my brain goes. I'm just terrible with numbers. Um, Ask my wife. Uh, <laughs> she uh, doesn't let me near our checkbook anymore. Uh, so I go towards the more sociological, cultural perspectives. But if you want to write on, you know, a more scientific or more, you know, a business topic or, um, you know, something that's related to the medical profession, I'm happy to get smart enough to have a conversation with you about any topic. Uh, but th this list does skew towards the more Hum, hum, you know, uh, humanities. Yes, I know my star. Oh, it's full now. It was almost full before. Uh, so consult this list. There are other websites. Uh, if you really, if you want to make sure that your uh, topic is tech heavy, well, here's here's the the tech websites that I'm sort of most fond of. Uh, CNET's not quite what it used to be, but the rest of these have really good writers. Wired really pays their writers well. The Verge has a lot of really good uh, writers and and thinkers. Okay. Um, Sci-fi movies, you know, can give you a 
uh, a lens through which to view your topic. So these are just some of the ones that kind of popped into my head. Uh, and there are many more. I would add uh, maybe like maybe like uh, Annihilation has some interesting ideas. Maybe I'll put that one here. Same director uh, as Ex Machina. This one I just uh, saw if I spell it correctly. Holy cow, I did. Um, so uh, Her is a very fascinating movie. It's about a, uh, uh, it's a love story between a man and, no kidding, uh, an operating system. Uh, Really, really interesting stuff. I recommend all these movies. Uh, Ex Machina, of course, has uh, you know some heavy lifting. Uh, and of course, the greatest science fiction movie of all time by the greatest director of all time, Stanley Kubrick, is 2001. And um, filmed in 1968, released in 1969, um, still has very relevant ideas. Um, so, uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of students really like to write on esports. Where my wife teaches at Mount Union, they have an esports team. They have scholarships. They have an esports coach. Okay, it's, uh, he's a, uh, I think he's like a 23 year old young man uh, who is, you know, uh, in charge of a large departmental budget now. Uh, it's fascinating uh, how quickly esports has infiltrated higher education. So if you want to write on something related to uh, esports, you're only going to make me smarter uh, and um, you're going to be interesting because it's rapidly growing. It's expanding outward uh, in many different ways. So, um, you know, uh, any any video game that maybe serves as an inspiration. Those are just two of the more. I know there are a lot more video games out there in Fortnite. You know, of course, I you know we're all <laughs> we all play Fortnite, don't we? But I think Cuphead and um, Until Dawn have some interesting ideas behind them. I'm not quite sure what the ideas behind Fortnite really are uh, outside of their business model. Which you know, if you want to write on Fortnite's business model, um, there's maybe something there. Uh, you got better taste in YouTube probably than I do, but uh, NerdWriter, um, NerdWriter1 technically, has um, a lot of really interesting uh, videos and will serve uh, as a further example of what we're looking for for the collaborative multimodal project as we get down that road. Uh, so if you have a, a YouTuber that you particularly recommend, I love, watch lots of like uh, historical like battle simulations of like famous war, you know wars that happened in the past, um, you know, the, diff the different military strategies involved in them. Uh, so you know, but I'm not going to put that on here. Uh, and then there are a million podcasts out there. I mean, I'm, I'm sure by the time you watch this, I'll have uh, started a podcast and um, I will have, you know, you'll have uh, uh, started one too. But these are three of the better ones that are sort of uh, uh, tech involved, mostly. Uh, so anyway, these are just way, just suggestions. Get inspired however you want to get inspired. Pull a book off your shelf. Go for a walk. Go people watch. Get